What I want to speak about today, um, I wanna, uh, it's, uh, the talk is basically uh, in two parts. The first part is, uh, is a basic design research framework, which, which we call grounded design. And I want to introduce that to you. And, um, and then in, a second, in the second part of the talk, I want to speak about one cluster of projects which we did in a neighborhood in, uh, in Dortmund and which is uh, basically Anne Weibert's work. And I want to show you, uh, if, by, by going through these projects, also some, some, gender, uh, some gender aspects uh, more in depth. We believe that grounded design um, is somehow, um, is somehow uh, apt to be uh, gender sensitive since, since we are very much, and that's close to what, uh, what Karen uh, is doing uh, and has introduced uh, uh, into industry very much, since it's very much looking at the, uh, at the people, at the user, at the organizations uh, in detail and, and uh, in, in depth and over long time. So that means diversity and uh, different ways of, of living or working uh, become part of the way we design IT artifacts and part of the way um, we, deal, uh, uh, we deal with, uh, with, with change in, in the organizations uh, by means of our design interventions. Um, yeah, what um, uh, uh, I mean, it's clear um, when I when I was uh, 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 computer science students at Britta Schinzel's uh, place in Aachen uh, when we when we spoke at that time in the somehow in the in the eighties when we spoke about computers and society then. Uh, it was still a pretty much, I mean, we could imagine that there is impact uh, on the broad society, but we basically saw it in military, we saw it in, in bureaucratic uh, organization, we saw it in, in manufacturing organizations. But uh, if we look from, from, from there to now, if we just see how much uh, uh, mobile phones have changed the way we live, the way we communicate, the, the way we, uh, we perceive news, the way we make news, the, may, the way we maintain our friendship networks and all these things. We see that, uh, that, that, that IT is shaping society and is shaped by society to a much larger extent than, than it has been maybe in the 1980s. And, um, and so, um, in a way, you could say that uh, designing, uh, uh, designing for and with users means also really to, uh, to impact the way uh, people live, the, people, the way people work, the, people, uh, the way people have fun. There is a big epistemological problem, or it's maybe not a problem, but we need to be aware of, um, if we do design research with users, then we are always extremely case-specific because all our results are basically gained with a particular type of, of user population, with a particular technology at a particular uh, time. Um, and, and so um, what I'm trying, so, 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 so uh, we, it's, it's somehow, it's a, it, so design research is in that sense a very strange research because um, computer science traditionally is not dealing with context specific results. And I think uh, one of the big uh, successes of Karen was to uh, bring to industry the understanding that this is not the case. And, uh, and um, social science doesn't really deal with design and uh, intervention. No? They, in, in its uh, vast mainstream, they are rather uh, descriptive and uh, and, uh, 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 and and being sh uh, somehow sh uh, shying away from uh, from dealing and intervening. So the question then is, and our own field, design research, like in HCI or CSCW, is um, is uh, is very much divided epistemologically. There are the people who believe that uh, that uh, that laws, uh, sort of natural laws, laws are uh, theories are ruling the interaction between uh, between the social and the technical. And then uh, there are the people, the other people who don't believe it, and uh, to which uh, I and uh, and my environment. Uh, belongs to, and so um, 
So what we what I try to do in this talk and what I what we have tried to do with this uh, concept of grounded design, we sort of want to uh, show or we want to line out a way how very case sensitive design research can maybe thrive towards transferability and making insights which we gain at some point in time in a very case specific environment, how it can how other different cases could learn from that and what we could do in preparing uh, our results to be better perceived by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by people who have not the same problem but maybe a structurally similar one and could maybe learn from us. So that's 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 basically the uh, the whole um, the whole um, uh, uh, approach which we which we try out here. We were initially pretty much um, influenced or put uh, put to the point by uh, by a certain uh, school of soci sociological thinking, the theories of practice. We have. Um, it was for us, uh, like like ten years ago, very much of an inspiration uh, because uh, this school of sociological thinking somehow said that uh, that there is a certain um, a certain identity a, a, a entity um, uh, which they call uh, call practice, and uh, it's it's a it's a rather bottom up small uh, uh, entity, and it's uh, it's it's a mainly routinized pattern of human action, which is historically grown, which consists of mental and physical aspects, um, which uh, is grounded in background knowledge and, um, and, uh, and the theorician of practice in, in the social sciences also very much emphasize the importance of artifacts, uh, technical artifacts in, and their use in practice. And, uh, and so this, this theoretical background somehow was, was, was a bit of an inspiration for us to think Think about what would it mean uh, to do practice-based design, to take social practices somehow and an analysis and an understanding of uh, social practices, to take that as a starting point to design, that means to build uh, innovative IT artifacts. So how can we think about the, the cross-fertilization of understanding and designing, which Terry Winograd somehow in his book, uh, in the, also in the 1980s, somehow said this, um, this is a, the challenge, really, in the field of applied computing. Yeah, so our framework, uh, which we have called grounded design, playing a little bit uh, with this uh, with a, a well-known social science uh, concept of, of grounded theory, um, I, I want to first give you a, a, a broad um, uh, overview of how we conceptualize uh, such a way of uh, of building IT artifacts while understanding its effect on social practices. So what we do, what we suggest to do, and what we do in our research group uh, since, uh, since 10, 15 years, we conduct a set of specific design case studies. And I will speak about uh, how we understand design case studies uh, uh, in a bit. We document these design uh, case, case studies in a, in a rather uh, complex uh, and, and profound manner. And we suggest, but we are still on the way to really think of appropriate ways to do that beyond academic papers. Because uh, many of you may uh, have made the experience, we do maybe a research project over three years and we make it to uh, get two or three papers out of it um, if, if, if we speak about uh, um, papers in good uh, good media but uh, we have learned during this f uh, th uh, two three or four years much more than is represented in these books and uh, or in the in the paper and and the question is um, is there a way to to uh, to maintain uh, uh, insights beyond what we put into academic papers which which by design need to be focused on a very specific issue of the of the whole project so then we suggest to build out of these design case studies and their documentation a sort of a, what we call e-portfolio in the sense of having uh, quite a couple of, uh, of our design experiences being well documented and, and uh, probably preserved in a, in a digitally accessible way because uh, we believe that searching or, um, or metadata, things like that would make it easier to navigate in this uh, rather rich collection of experiences. 
And in the next step, um, we believe if we have documented our cases, if we have them at hand, then comparing the design case studies would help us to, um, uh, to uh, build up sensitizing concepts with design relevance. That means if we have rather different but somehow similar and comparative cases, then we could come up with Concepts and we could offer these concepts in 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 this bloomer sense of uh, of being uh, sensitizing concepts uh, as 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 a sort of a, a, a suggestion to other people who work on on similar or or uh, or, uh, or or maybe even on different uh, problems, but uh, as 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 a suggestion of to play with this uh, with these concepts and maybe appropriate them. And we also believe that these concepts could be used to navigate uh, inside an, uh, a portfolio, which we call e-portfolio. So it, it maybe helps to find similarities easier and to, to uh, get out what we've done. So, and a last element of our research approach, approach is what we call meta-research, and that means research on our research practices. And that's something which, uh, which, which I first of all think is quite important because um, if you, if you intervene so much into social practices as we do uh, in our research group, then you also need to have a sort of institutionalization of of, of reflectivity. And uh, so we have in our group uh, one or two or three uh, people who basically observe our own practices and uh, and indeed to do it. Um, we have uh, we have somehow two uh, two goals with it. The first is to help help us uh, to better uh, understand what we do and to be cri self critical with with what we do. And the second thing is also it could be help to design tools for us. For instance, the ePortfolio, uh, which we are right now uh, on the way to build in different prototypes, very much benefits from people understanding how we really do research, how we get ideas, how we document things, which problems we experience with it right now. You know, so um, so meta research sort of an important element uh, of what we uh, what we do and. Um, yeah, and I want to go a little bit, um, uh, just just a little bit, uh, go into the individual different phases. Uh, uh, so, design case studies in a uh, design case study in our sense is typically um, uh, um, this. This uh, uh, um, uh, this figure looks very um, very uh, temporarily structured. Design case studies are not like that. They intertwine between a pre-study where we try to understand the field of application, and then an IT design, which is often in our case a participatory uh, design activity, and then what where we distinguish maybe a bit from the Scandinavian school is we are very much interested in long-term appropriation of what we have designed. Because we believe that the impact and the changing aspect, uh, effect of what IT does in context needs to be seen over time. Eh? Because many of the appropriation moves only happen with time. And so we need to have a long, longer period view into what's going on. So. Um, I wanted to give you an example, but I will do that later in the talk. Um, here you see a little bit um, how we right now think about this uh, building up of, of, of an e-portfolio and, uh, and how we sort of uh, try to structure. This is the yellow lines are design case studies and we structure them in different domains where we work. Right now we work, we, we, we have right now lots of uh, research activities in the area cooperative work. Specifically we very much look at manufacturing uh, work uh, in the, in the, also in the vicinity of our place, so we look at, at Industry 4.0 for the, for the Germans among you, uh, uh, ways of, of work settings, and we see what IT, how IT could uh, improve work of, uh, of uh, manufacturing actors. We look at community support. I will uh, give you examples later in the talk. We, we uh, have, have a long tradition in working on sustainability issues specifically in the sense of uh, of how could uh, the consumption how how could if we if we make the approach which we explore there is if we can make um, the uh, the consumption of resources visible would it have an impact on the use of resources 
That's, 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 and we, we very much looked at electricity consumption in families, uh, like living labs, like uh, what, what, what Michael just, just had presented. But uh, we also look at companies where, we, um, uh, where, we, uh, where, where the problem is much more complex. Huh? And uh, we also, uh, under sustainability, we also have a research line which looks at, uh, at mobility and new ways of organizing mobility. We're not so much interested in self-driving, but uh, we're more interested in whether we can make people share rights and, uh, and what would be good, uh, good ways to, um, to overcome, often with ride-sharing applications, specifically if you are not working with them in urban centers, the problem is that uh, you need to overcome the problem of critical mass. Uh, because because not enough people uh, offer rights, and, and, and we have thought about uh, some techniques how to, uh, how to increase uh, the, the offers after having tried to understand how people uh, would like to share uh, rights. And we have a rather large uh, research activities in the area of aging society, um, where we uh, where we uh, see of which role can IT play in 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 in, in ensuring sort of uh, the quality of uh, life of elderly. So taking these design case studies together and putting them into an into an e-portfolio into into uh, in, into a shared documentation, then we can start to compare and we can start to uh, develop cost-cutting themes, which then could uh, would will lead us and and lead us to uh, the development of concepts, tentative concepts, and, uh, and in our research practice often these cross-cutting themes are so far mainly journal papers, you know, the, the design case studies are typically structured somehow like, uh, like uh, conference papers or in different phases, uh, maybe if we, if we make it smartly, maybe two or three uh, conference papers and uh, the cross-cutting things because you really need to, uh, to uh, elaborate on, on the different context and, and work out uh, comparisons are, are then journal papers, but, but that's just, I mean, that's, that's very, uh, very uh, referential to on academic publication practices, and, and it uh, could be also uh, under different conditions differently. And um, so, um, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, we, 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 we do uh, compare uh, things and um, um, it, it can be on different dimensions. We could uh, we could look at uh, at the pre-study uh, um, perspective. So striking elements of practice, which uh, which uh, could be similar in different. Uh, for instance, if we have uh, different, uh, very different aging uh, designs, uh, but often the elements of the life of elderly uh, are still similar. And we could we we, we are right now uh, uh, developing concepts to describe. Uh, uh, the similarities. It can be about IT design. We, we have a sort of, uh, for our projects, we, we, we are on the way not so bad uh, so far. We have sort of built an architecture where a lot of the applications which we have designed come out of a sort of similar architecture so we can use um, concepts, but even we can reuse somehow uh, uh, software uh, to uh, to, to work with, with different uh, 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 application uh, domains. Um, this uh, bottom-up concept building uh, can be about uh, ap the appropriation, that means how, uh, how, um, uh, uh, how specific features of IT artifacts uh, uh, change and uh, uh, change social practices uh, in, in the appropriation process. And they can also be um, um, uh, transitional between the different uh, phases and, and, and aspects. Um, yeah, we um, we also um, uh, right now working on. Um, uh, we, are, we are trying to document uh, right now a couple of our past projects, and um, so so we are trying. It's it's also quite interesting if you have uh, finished a project uh, like maybe half a year. It's quite surprising how little or how complicated it is to reconstruct it to find the materials, to find the raw data, to find the prototypes, to find even the... We, we had a project where we worked with, uh, with firefighters. It was a really successful project, and we had uh, also built interesting hardware. Uh, even the hardware had disapp 
yet half, half a year after our project was over. And, uh, and so to, to really document uh, seriously and to, uh, to document in a, in a sense that, uh, that, that it could be helpful and beneficial for people uh, who later look at it is, 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 uh, is quite, a, quite a bit of a challenge. And uh, so, yeah, so, so for, uh, with regard to a pre-study perspective, you could, we, we, we think of uh, documenting photos, uh, semi-structured questionnaires, field notes, videos, uh, interview, uh, uh, interview recordings. Uh, it's not trivial, honestly, to do that because um, many, since, since we work very, uh, very closely and often also in very sensitive environments, um, uh, it's, uh, for instance, it's not so clear whether we could uh, put um, uh, all field notes or all interview transcripts uh, into, into a repository because it's uh, somehow violating the, the trust you have built with the people. So, so we're still playing with ideas uh, how, to, how to really deal with this. Uh, with regard to IT design, of course, running system versions, prototypes, mock-ups, documentation of design uh, workshops would be appropriate. And as I said, it's, uh, it's really interesting how quickly all these remembrances and even the artifacts uh, the the uh, the remembrances which are uh, which are materialized in artifacts how quickly they can disappear and uh, with regard to an appropriation uh, uh, perspective similar things like like in the pre study perspective we, we would look at usage data uh, also videos and and uh, and audio and and uh, and uh, field notes um, yeah um, um, <clears throat> yeah, so the idea with the with the with the ePod for you, I've I've explained already a little bit. Uh, we we want to use this uh, documentation to uh, to enable people to uh, gain uh, our insight uh, or to gain uh, or to sh to share somehow uh, insights about uh, uh, what we have experienced in our uh, design uh, in our design work. We will uh, definitely need. Uh, uh, we need to be careful about access rights. I mentioned that already with regard to uh, interview transcripts. Uh, um, we need to uh, find uh, probably we need different views on the on the uh, on the data which documents a certain uh, design efforts, and we need to offer opportunities to annotate that people can play with this set of materials in a fruitful way for them and to, to tailor it to their needs and, uh, and, and, and ways like that. Yeah, and um, the final uh, step is, um, is uh, research uh, on, on design, research practices. Um, I mentioned already uh, we, we are doing ethnographies on our own work. Um, um, indeed, um, this is a quite painful process. I have not uh, believed that when we started it. You know, it looks like a quite smart intellectual uh, effort to uh, do research on your own research. Uh, but uh, if you, uh, but but if you, <laughs> but if you have people who ask their colleagues how they really do things and how they really preserve things and uh, how they really act in the field of application, that's painful to both, to the people who need to speak about uh, their practices because none of our practice is perfect. And uh, so to speak about that, you open yourself towards a colleague, you, you, uh, you uh, sort of uh, feel that you, uh, you know, that you make yourself uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Weak to some extent, and the people who uh, the people who collect the data somehow there there are suspicions against them, and uh, and 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 uh, at some point in time we had the problem that people thought that they are basically spying to better inform me about what's going on in our group, and uh, and uh, no, it's, it sounds a little bit interesting, but uh, but it's a tr that's what happened, and uh, and so uh, uh, setting up uh, meta research is 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 not at all trivial. And and, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, but I think still though we really have ma gone through really painful processes with regard to that I still think it's a very uh, it's a very uh, helpful activity to better understand where we could improve our practices and also to design for our practices you know if if we believe that this uh, grounded design makes sense somehow it also needs to make sense for us ourselves. Huh? 
Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we recently uh, published a book which somehow um, describes a little bit uh, this grounded design perspective. Um, so if you are interested, uh, uh, feel free to look at it. What I now, now want to do, um, I want to um, take one set of projects. You remember we have, have one, uh, one line of uh, design research activities in the sense of community support. And, uh, and I, uh, I want to speak about uh, this line of research also because they are in a, in a, in a, uh, all of, almost all of our projects, of course, need to deal with diversity, but here in this case, maybe some of, uh, some of gender uh, aspects and diversity aspects uh, are, uh, are, are maybe even uh, stronger visible. And also, I like to uh, talk about these parts uh, of our work because Anne Weibert is here and she's the one who really did this, in my eyes, really beautiful uh, type of research in a neighborhood. Um, so, the neighborhood is, uh, is uh, in uh, Dortmund. Dortmund is a city in Germany in the Ruhr area. It's a city uh, at the eastern end. Um, the Ruhr area used to be one of the richest part of Germany uh, due to uh, uh, coal mining and, and related heavy industries since the beginning of the 20th century up to the 1970s. Um, the, all the cities in the rural areas uh, suffer since that time, um, and uh, that's true for Dortmund too. Um, the Nordstadt is even a little bit of a particular setting, because the Nordstadt was always a place where migrants came in. It's, it basically means it's north of the train station and the train line, and it's a neighborhood of, of uh, some uh, 60,000 uh, inhabitants right now. And uh, the Nordstadt has, uh, has seen lots of ways waves of, uh, of immigration and migrants. Um, uh, it started in the 19th century where Polish steel workers and coal miners came into the Ruhr area. That was, uh, uh, that, that, that was a, a, a big uh, immigration, uh, immigration move to Germany about which nobody speaks anymore, but which fully enabled the building up of the Ruhr area because there were not enough uh, labor uh, anywhere else. In the 1950s and to 70s, we had had, uh, workers, that's also quite typical for many German cities from southern Europe and later on from, the Turkey, uh, from Turkey who moved in there. And um, in the 2010s, we had another uh, quite a bit of, uh, well, there was migration, of course, all the time, but another uh, bigger move was uh, in the 2010s, re refugees from the Middle East and migrants from Romania and uh, and uh, Bulgaria uh, came uh, into into the town and in 2000 uh, into this neighborhood of town and uh, specifically in 2015 this neighborhood had some 70 percent of local population with a migration background. So you see, it's a it's a it's an interesting but also very uh, very complex um, uh, uh, neighborhood to work with. And Anna uh, has worked with with the neighborhood in which she lives uh, uh, since 10 years and uh, and I. I have the honor to present some of the, uh, the different design interventions uh, which, uh, which we have conducted there. The first one, um, the first one is uh, is something uh, people who know our uh, our research work for, uh, over longer time. Uh, we we have built computer clubs um, uh, since even a bit longer than the ten years. Uh, we started in the neighborhood where I was living um, or where I'm still living. Uh, uh, so the computer club which I have started had started long time almost 15 years ago is now closed because we were not able to maintain it. But um, the idea in this computer uh, clubs, uh, uh, which we call come-in clubs, is the idea to bring uh, people of different ethnical backgrounds together on doing uh, projects in a neighborhood. And by bringing them together uh, into doing things together, the assumption is that they started to speak to each other, that their identity is moving a little bit towards each other, that their mutual understanding gets better, and that friendship networks uh, 
emerge maybe maybe across uh, uh, ethnical backgrounds. So that's that's a uh, that's a thing, and we tried this. Uh, Anne uh, built this up. Uh, this the come in uh, uh, one of the come in uh, uh, computer clubs in in the in the Dortmunder Nordstadt, and um, and I will speak about that a little bit uh, later. The second intervention which we did uh, 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 like uh, three uh, starting three years ago with a, with a wave of uh, of Middle Eastern uh, immigrants. Uh, 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 coming coming to the Nordstadt is a na is, is a neighborhood center, partnering with local in, in, uh, church institutions and and uh, local NGO, and there. This, uh, this, uh, this activity specifically focusing on female refugees and migrants uh, in dealing uh, in, in supporting their daily life. And uh, our part of this, uh, the, the neighborhood center is broader in its approach, but our part is, uh, is having once a week a two, uh, two and a half hour session where, they help, where we help them with IT support in mastering their lives in Germany. Because uh, because uh, that's that's not trivial at all. Because uh, you know you, you you cannot get a job, you cannot find an apartment, you cannot uh, uh, deal with uh, many other things if you don't have a minimum capability in dealing with IT nowadays. And uh, many of them don't have it when they arrive. The third intervention in the neighborhood is a language cafe um, where we also work with local volunteers and a church organization. This basically uh, um, uh, is working with, uh, with uh, male refugees, um, uh, which the, the story there is that, uh, that this, uh, this, uh, this coffee place uh, um, was close to, um, to, to the harbor in Dortmund and uh, during the height of the refugee crisis, the German government had moved in boats there to host uh, male, uh, young male refugees on these boats. And uh, so right now they have moved the boats away, uh, but still the, uh, the male refugees come still there and meet uh, once a week in this, uh, in this uh, what, how that, what we call here language cafe. And the fourth project which we uh, have started uh, in, um, <clears throat> in, in this neighborhood is, uh, is, is, is a project called Netwerkzeug. And um, there we are building uh, together with refugees, local volunteers and the city of Dortmund, we are, we are building a platform um, which uh, supposedly should help refugees to, uh, to better find uh, support organizations, to better find language uh, classes for them, to better get access to the city uh, of Dortmund uh, to the to the to the services the city offers for uh, for emerging uh, um, uh, 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 for, for for upcoming uh, refugees and the network soil project is very much of a participatory design process which uh, uh, which I will speak about uh, in a bit a bit more here you see. Some of the, uh, you see, uh, we are coming back now to the first of the four interventions in this neighborhood. That is this traditional computer uh, club, come in computer club, which we run there. Uh, Anne basically runs it since, uh, and, and colleagues. Uh, here is somebody, you, some people who know my group well, is uh, Konstantin Ahl uh, in its very early uh, days uh, working with us, working with, uh, with, uh, with, with children there. And you see that, uh, you see here, uh, there was one of the projects in this computer clubhouse was uh, was uh, the women uh, the, the mothers of the kids uh, they uh, they built their own built up their own servers so they really deconstructed and reconstructed the hardware of a computer among themselves and uh, and you see that also the kids got somehow uh, engaged in this uh, understanding of how a computer is uh, is built up you get a little bit of an uh, of an idea. Many of the projects. I mean, we need to be inventive. We cannot run every every couple of months the same project. So we we develop with the, with with the, uh, with the families in this elementary school. We uh, develop uh, uh, project ideas which make sense to them. Yeah. So um, speaking about gender aspects in a, a little bit more uh, a, a focused, uh, a specific sense. Um, um, what we do, we open here spaces for children and youth. Um, one of the nice things, and which I think shows that, the, that this club really works, uh, there are alumni, that means kids who left the elementary school to go to 
the next level of schooling, uh, they come back uh, uh, still because the club is always at the same time, at the same space, and uh, and so 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 they come often and help uh, and work with the with 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 with, with the kids, uh, uh, the, the now uh, kids of the of the elementary school, and uh, we get. Um, mothers in, as you saw, uh, mothers with migration backgrounds too, and for the mothers we saw um, that um, for them this club offers a chance to get access to computers beyond their families. The families, they have maybe a, a computer at home, uh, but it is very much a boys thing, the father and the male kids to do that. And uh, here in the computer club, they get a chance, the mothers get the chance to uh, apply, to search, to, uh, to do, do, do things uh, which they like to do. Um, yeah, we also use, um, Anna has done really nice projects around digital uh, e-textiles e together with, uh, with, with Jennifer Rode. And um, uh, there, is, there, is a, uh, um, uh, there are lots of, 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 of where we also try to play with new ideas like maker technologies and things like that to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to keep the club interesting huh? because uh, it lives on being interesting to the people huh? and we need to always have a little bit uh, new, a new thing coming uh, uh, to, uh, to keep the people beyond what they have at home. Huh? At least occasionally we need to do that. Which is for us a sort of nice because that gives us research opportunities to explore new technologies and how they, how they, would, uh, how, how they would work in a, in, a, in a setting like this. Um, there is uh, what we can see um, that, that the original approach which we had 15 years ago that uh, collaborative computer-based projects uh, could help uh, to to make people understand each other across uh, culture, gender, and age. And uh, this, while not never perfect and, uh, and really a difficult uh, program and project, still has led to quite interesting things. We, we saw also some of the mothers, um, I, I, for instance, the, for the first club, I can say that with more authenticity, than what I would say about Dortmund, but there I saw, for instance, a Turkish mother who was working with us uh, for a couple of years, and uh, and uh, she got had quite some bad family problems. Uh, later, divorced from her husband, and she made it. Um, she made it so, and we believe that the club had a certain role on her life. Made made it to be now a member of the uh, of the um, uh, foreign uh, foreigners living in the city in the, in, in the administrative. Uh, council, uh, Ausländerbeirat for the people uh, with a German background. So, uh, so we could see that, that, that being an important part in the club could have impacts on their life and how they perceived their life also aus outside the club and, uh, and things like that. The second, um, the second uh, uh, design intervention which we had in this neighborhood is, uh, 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 or which we have in this neighborhood is a neighborhood uh, center uh, where, where, the, uh, where women mainly uh, uh, from refugee background come and uh, they, the center is open the whole week every day and we are doing our, uh, our IT based uh, intervention there once a week also for for, for two and a half hours, and you get here a little bit of uh, how that looks like. It's um, sometimes we send in um, mail, like Constantine, we may send in mail, uh, mail, uh, mail uh, students or mail uh, PhD students or work uh, or colleagues, and uh, that's sometimes maybe not so much for the P for the ladies themselves who come there, but um, it's for them a little bit. Uh, uh, nervous making, so they invested in having a curtain at the window that people could not look from outside easily through the glass into the club and see that there, there are, uh, 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 that, that there are, um, uh, that, that, that we help uh, there also with, with some of the male people. What we can see here 
um, uh, this is an open learning uh, space for women, and uh, what what you see is that uh, that uh, that this really helps um, working with us. There helps them. The, the, the newly of newly emerging migrants with Arab background or also with a Roma background uh, to uh, to get uh, to overcome digital and divide and uh, and and to really learn capabilities which they really need to to uh, to to have in living in 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 Germany where many things or quite some things are IT. Uh, IT related, IT based, and uh, and uh, often, yeah, they need to acquire that. The language cafe you see here, um, uh, you see a couple of the projects uh, which uh, we did in the language cafe uh, with with a male uh, young uh, migrants. Uh, down there, you see, uh, they, they, they didn't have a chessboard, so they did a, a 3D uh, printing project where they, uh, where they printed the, uh, the figures, and you see there were cooking, uh, cooking uh, uh, effects uh, where, uh, where the neighborhood um, uh, has a sort of uh, three steps um, community uh, type of uh, dinnering experience, and, uh, and we, where, where normally families invite each other, but uh, we, we made the, uh, the, the, the uh, people of the, uh, of the cafe uh, to, uh, to create the cafe as being one of the three steps places so that they could better build connections with the peop other people in the neighborhood, which was a very important issue for them. Yeah, and I will just uh, want to say a little bit about the... Uh, the network project you see here on the on the upper photos, you see how it looked in uh, in Dortmund in 2015 when we had the uh, large wave of uh, of migrants coming via the Balkan route and. Uh, and down there, you see how we work uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with the people in the neighborhood uh, or in the in the city, and and the people from the city administration and building this uh, network zeug, uh, what we call network zeug, this platform where uh, where we help and support uh, uh, incoming uh, migrants, and uh, and uh, there again. Um, um, uh, we, we, we are fighting uh, with, with many problems there too in this participatory design process. Uh, specifically also, um, we uh, had a, quite a big of fluctuation of participation because when the, when the, when, when, when the refugees uh, uh, got stabilized, they often didn't come anymore because they got maybe a job in another city or they got a, a flat far away and things like that. And so it was not easy to maintain uh, stability in the participatory design process. There were also questions around the issue, who is a migrant, who is, who is eligible to be there, and, uh, and of course they themselves don't see themselves uh, for good reasons, uh, not necessarily as migrants, but rather as people uh, who live in the neighborhood. So it's a, it's, it's a very, very uh, also difficult process of, of how to, uh, how to um, uh, define boundaries and, uh, and, and uh, things like this. And, and, and uh, we bring in, they, they, they have a sort of team which, which, uh, which um, uh, creates content and we are designing uh, next to it somehow some tools, for instance, a specific tool to find language courses, uh, 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 and things, things like that. So it's a sort of pretty uh, complex uh, 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 but interesting design process around this platform in the, in the place there. And I want to say, in the sense of meta research, on top of what we have done, I want to give you a little bit of an impression because that can have, of course, many different layers. For instance, if you see the, uh, the grounded design work in Dortmund, we see us always confronted, and Anne can uh, elaborate much more on that, uh, that we have our own gender perceptions and uh, ways of looking at certain situations and certain social practices which we see. And when we get the people uh, 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 with migrant or not migrant background coming and working with us in, this, uh, in the neighborhood, in our uh, design intervention environment, we are always at negotiation, our values of how we uh, believe that uh, that uh, the role, for instance, of of, uh, of women and husbands should be, or and and what we see with the people, and uh, and what type of uh, light build, what type of vision we uh, communicate uh, in the in the clubs, and 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 how we uh, implement technologies and implement 
our other interventions uh, with regard to this uh, to this very delicate uh, relationship. And we know that people from uh, uh, Roma as well as people uh, from Arab countries have very different uh, relationships. And we see these problems of these relationships happening in Germany. And and we and it's really a challenge for us to negotiate between what we believe is right and to support and help to, in a small bottom-up way, develop their practices. I can also say, I mentioned that already, that uh, on, a, on a different level of, of, of meta-research, also our team, uh, um, we, we, uh, we, 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 we are discussing, we haven't taken gender relationships to so much so far to an uh, to a subject of our of the meta research in our own group but um, still um, uh, if reflecting a little bit about how uh, how uh, how we uh, how our team has developed. There, there, there are uh, a lot has happened uh, via uh, students who started working with us and then got PhD students and uh, and things like that. And the core of our group somehow <coughs> is a network of friends and uh, and and uh, collaborate and we have we have collaboration over 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 very long time uh, in the core uh, of our group and uh, so this is somehow it turns out to be rather productive and we can master that way quite complex interesting projects in the real world but on the other hand we also have to see that this has also some element of 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 exclusion and uh, and uh, and so uh, we are also playing with ideas of how to uh, how to um, how to get a cultural, uh, uh, maybe new impacts, new people into our group, which have not maybe gone through this uh, legitimate peripheral participation way of learning and, and becoming part, part of our group. Yeah. Um, uh, to, su to, su to sum up in, in a couple of steps, um, with regard to gender aspects in practice-based computing, um, uh, we need to, uh, 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 if, if we really want to uh, have impact uh, in, in, in neighborhoods like we have seen in the, in the Dortmunder Nordstadt, uh, we, uh, we need a long-term, we need long-term engagement, things don't happen within months, they often don't happen within years. We really need to stay engaged. We need to be uh, reflective, of course. There, uh, uh, our work is only possible with, lo uh, with strong uh, cooperation with local uh, um, uh, stakeholders, like the NGOs and the church organizations we work with in the different projects or the schools. Um, you need to have uh, empathy in our group only people I, it's my belief who really share sort of the normative uh, background uh, can work successfully and with pleasure. You know, you need to like to work with uh, with people uh, with whom you maybe in the beginning cannot really even speak well and and whose whose life habits and uh, social practices are very strange to you in the beginning. And and you, we need a certain type of personality and, 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 and be openness uh, to, to, to work in projects like this. Uh, we need continuous room for discussion between the different normative systems and, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and values. And, um, and uh, grounded design uh, is not, not a method, it's rather a framework and we need to uh, adapt it and develop it each time in, in specific local uh, contexts. And um, I can say a little bit uh, on, a, on a little bit higher level, you know, practice, uh, and, and that may be clear to you, practice orientation is an inclusive framework in designing IT. We are looking at diversity and we are making this diversity really uh, shine out. Uh, but um, but it's, uh, and, and we think that it's therefore also, if we look at the HCI discussion and CHI discussion, that this is a framework which, uh, which could, 
bridge in a way the gap between uh, this very casualistic approaches uh, and 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 the, the objectivists who claim that uh, everything can be uh, can be determined by uh, by rules uh, of of society. So so we believe that grounded design could offer a middle way as a sort of a, a, an approach there. Practice orientation requires a long perspective, a long term perspective. It's trust is the basis of local cooperation and facilitate. We need to facilitate social technical processes, which are complex anyway. The permanent reflection of gender aspects during the whole uh, research process uh, should happen, like we need to look at many other things uh, from a meta research perspective. Uh, um, and we, we see, uh, as I uh, said, uh, we see in this different design intervention still uh, quite a bit of, uh, of change in the field and in the neighborhood if we speak particularly about this proje project. And, uh, and so that makes us a little bit positive and hopefully that, uh, that things can be done if you, if you engage uh, locally with a design perspective. I spoke about meta research, I don't want to repeat that here, uh, but I think it's a painful process and a painful and, and extremely labor intensive process the way we do research, but I finally think that the quality of design can only be, and of design intervention can only be evaluated in social practice. So I, I see also little alternative alternative if you have a research program like ours to do it uh, similar or at least uh, in, somehow, uh, 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 in somehow similar. Thank you very much for, uh, for your attention. <laughs>